Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Uh, let us uh, quieten our hearts as we come before the Lord. and sisters, let us continue to quieten our hearts uh, as we come before the Lord.
Thank you, Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we've come together as a family of God in our Father's presence to offer Him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive His holy word, to bring before Him the needs of the world, to ask His forgiveness of our sins, and to seek His grace that through His Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to His service. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us take this time to let the Spirit of God to search our hearts, Brothers and sisters, together let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow man in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Receive God's forgiveness. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in your goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as a people forgiven, let us rise and declare. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let us worship the Lord. All praise to his name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us remain standing for a time of praise. Let us sing uh, this song of praise in our hearts.
brothers and sisters, let us pray the collect together. The collect can be found in the front of the bulletin. The collect for today is the 13th Sunday after Trinity. Together let us pray. Lord God, protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy that you, being our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we finally lose not the things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The second collect for today, together. Our God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we may trust in your defence and not fear the power of any adversaries through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first scripture reading is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 1 uh, to 4. Uh, please be seated. Okay, scripture reading is from Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honour your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Holy Gospel is taken from the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, reading from verse 1. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Matthew chapter 15, verses 1 to 9. Then Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat. Jesus answered them, And why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God commanded, Honour your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if anyone tells his father or his mother, what you would have gained from me is given to God, he need not honour his father. So, for the sake of your tradition, you have made void the word of God. You hypocrites! Well did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, These people honours me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word nourishes, us, lead us, guide us, instruct us direct us strengthen us thank you lord for your word even we broken sinners at the cross receiving your mercy and your grace we thank you and i pray god even as we look into your word that your spirit will minister deeply in our hearts that whatever situation whatever condition of our life lord as our eyes look to you as our heart depend on you, as our soul seek you, Lord, we know your word promises we will find you and we will find rest for our soul. Thank you, Father. So I pray, Spirit of the living God, 
minister deeply in the hearts of these dear brothers present here today and also for the many online at home. Thank you, Father, for your love and your grace. Speak to us, God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please have a seat. Wonderful joy to see you in community together as the people of God and also for the dear brothers and sisters, friends and visitors who are with us online at this church service. I wonder, dear friends, as we look around the world, what kind of attitudes can we find towards parents? Well, I found out that in Japan, there is a legend with this Japanese term called ubasute. Ubasute in Japanese means to abandon an old woman. And legend is told that uh, at times, the Japanese bring their sick elderly relative, particularly their mother or father, carry, they, carry them up to the top of the mountain and leave them there to die. In China, we read of Confucian ethics and this issue of filial piety, or the Chinese word xiao, xiao jing, xiao jing the xiao, is a virtue of respect for one's parents and elders. In USA, sometimes you see the sitcom, the drama, or you may know of American friends who call their dad, Hi Tom! American children expected to leave home at 18 years old for quite a number of them. And sometimes people ask who will care for their parents when they become old. In Singapore, just about 25 years ago, there was a uh, Act of Parliament that put in place the Maintenance of Parents Act where children can claim maintenance or rather parents can claim maintenance from their children who choose not to support their parents. We continue our sermon series, Living the Ten Commandments in the 21st Century and today we will look at commandment number five found in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And earlier, our sister Sonia had read from Ephesians chapter 6, the words of the Apostle Paul, who reminded the church at Ephesus, telling them, Children, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And in verse 2, to honour your father and your mother, this is the first commandment, with a promise that it may go well with you, that you may live long in the land. And then of course in verse 4, Paul addressed the fathers. Fathers, do not provoke, or another Bible translation, do not exasperate your children to anger. Or in Hokkien, it says, don't pick chick, you know. Fathers, don't make your children too pick chick. But bring them up in the instruction and discipline of God. The fifth commandment, Scripture tells us, is the first commandment with a promise. And there are two promises if you look at Ephesians 6, 1 to 3, and also Exodus 20, 12. The first part of the promise, it says here, that it may go well with you. That it may go well with you. That those who honour their father and mother, there is a sense of personal well-being a rest, there is a restfulness, a harmony, a peace, and a joy in family life, that it may go well with you and I, when we learn to honour our father and our mother. The second part of the promise is that you may live long in the land, that you may live long in the land, and here it gives a picture of peace and stability instead of fights, quarrels, and arguments. You know, sometimes family disagreements can be difficult at times leading to violence. And God's word here is clear. Those who honour father and mother, they will live long in the land. You know, when the family is stable, secure, the nation, the society will also 
be the same. How you see a country and the state of the country, you see the family. If you look at the families of each nation, it is an indicator of how the nation can be. So here, the fifth commandment comes with a promise that it will go well with you and it will live long in the land, indicating a sense of well-being, harmony, peace, stability in the family, in the home, and it will be widened to the whole society and nation. How then, my dear friends, can you and I honour our father and mother? So for today's sermon, it will be really practical. I will go through and suggest seven, seven areas how we can show honour to our parents or, for that matter, our elders. And I like to use the acronym PARENTS, P-A-R-E-N-T-S. The first is this. Pardon them graciously. Pardon them graciously, or we can say forgive them with grace and strength from God. Among all the different areas that I'll share, the seven different perspectives of what it means to show honour to our parents, I submit to you this is one of the most important ones. I tell you, this is one of the most important and yet at times the most difficult one to do to forgive our parents, to pardon them graciously. It is a reality of life, isn't it? Our parents are human. They are imperfect. Which family does not have a parent with faults, who had made wrong decisions, who had made some failures, who had made mistakes either intentionally or accidentally, or in negligence, or weakness. And even for that matter, sins parents may have done against their children. And if I can say broadly, in general, if you look at society, where parents may have abused their children. And lately, if you follow the Straits Times reports, there, are, there have been quite a number of court cases where to our horror and perhaps to your sadness and horror, how can a parent do this to their child? Abuse through action, abuse through our words, neglect of children, the pressure that parents can exert on their children, comparing them with other children and so forth. So it is a reality of life. Parents were always being human, be imperfect, mistakes, decisions, sins. I don't know about you, but perhaps as you think about this area of forgiveness in your growing up years, or even right now, in current times, is there anger? Is there an anger? Is there a bitterness? Is there a resentment towards our parents because of the words they have said, because of the actions they have done? They have caused you deep wounds. For the young ones in our church community, both here, present here, and also those online, perhaps you may have feelings of anger, bitterness, or resentment towards your parents now. And but for us who are grown up, middle aged now, and even going into senior uh, uh, aged, in the past, were there anger, bitterness, and resentment that we have not resolved in our heart? So today I encourage us this first practical way, what it means to honour our parents, to extend grace and forgiveness to them. Why? Why? Because in God, in Christ, we also have received grace and mercy and forgiveness. That we too are imperfect, broken sinners at the foot of the cross. Just as we need God's grace and mercy, so too our parents. 
So part of our growing up into adulthood for many of us is to learn what it means to understand our parents, what it means to relate with them, what it means to ask God for understanding, for an insight into the circumstances that our parents had gone through themselves. And as God gave us understanding, insight, may we seek God's grace and find strength in God to, to choose to forgive. Not so much to feel like forgiving, but it is a choice. It is volitional, not so much emotional. Because if we base on our emotion of anger, bitterness, resentment, we will find it very difficult to forgive. But when it's volitional, we choose to one, to forgive our parents for their failures, for their mistakes, for their inconsistency between your sibling and you. How come now my brother can get a bigger ice cream during my time your ice cream smaller now he can get magnum last time only he get 50 cent potong ice cream how come ah? you know there are many ways parents may knowingly or unknowingly make this kind of inconsistent decision parenting is tough isn't it parenting is tough there was someone who just gradua graduated from psychology and he told his friends, he just got married, no children yet. And he said that he has five theories how to raise good children. Then 15 years later, his friend asked him, how is your theories working? Because 15 years, when he got married, he said, oh, he's got five theories how to raise good children. 15 years later, he had five children. And his friend asked him, hey, at that time you got no children, you just got married, you say you got five theories, right now you got five children, how? Ah? And then he told his friend, last time I had five theories and no children. Now I have five children, but I got no theories, <laughs> because all the theories doesn't work. <laughs> it worked well on paper, but in real life, it is different when you have your own children. Not only we learn to forgive our parents, but I, I believe that we also need to learn to be humble and courageous, to ask our parents to forgive us. We may think our parents have made those mistakes, but we ourselves as children, perhaps at times, would have broken the hearts of our dad or mom through our disobedience, through our rebellion, through our stubbornness that we can find in our heart humility and grace to ask forgiveness from our parents. Growing up as a child, there were times where I had um, a difficulty understanding uh, my parents and for a good part of my earlier uh, life, I had uh, yeah, some kind of unhappiness, resentment in my heart. And I asked the question, why did my parents put me away, you know, to stay with my grandparents from four years old till I was 18 years old when I had to enlist in the army? So a good part of my growing up years, four years old, just about kindergarten, just perhaps our dear young lady over there, young girl in our century today, four years old, her age, until 18. And sometimes I wonder, because I didn't have a happy experience living with my other uncles and aunties. And it was only later, a little bit later on, at age of about 22 and 23, that I fully understood why. Why my parents had to make that decision. Why I had to put to stay with my grandparents rather than to be with my own dad and mom for those crucial growing up years from age 4 to 18. 
And about age 22, 23, I underst- when I understood why, I was released. You know, I was released emotionally. The Lord just set me free emotionally and taught me what and I need to forgive them as I understood why they had to do. And also, I also see God's guiding hand upon my life because those years were also years of molding, guiding me. And by the grace of God, by the grace of God, a book, I came across a book entitled, you want to guess the topic? A small booklet is entitled, Forgiving Your Parents. <laughs> I read it, I weep and cry, and the Lord, by the Spirit of God, by the grace of God, helped me to forgive, and I had emotional healing from then on, from then on, no more, no more bitterness or resentment, because I chose to forgive, as I understood why they had to do what they did. So pardon our parents graciously. Second, Appreciate them gratefully. My friends, appreciate our parents gratefully, especially for the young among us. Really, really, I want to encourage you, the youths, the young children, the young adults, especially even for those who are already of middle age. Appreciate them for their love, their care, and their help. Even, even if you find that they may be difficult at times. So for the youths and the children, you're listening in. Learn to say thank you to your dad and your mom. Do not take them for granted. Thank them for cooking, for ironing, for washing, for sewing, for toiling, even when they may not be well at times. We need to appreciate with gratefulness. Uh, acknowledge our parents' sacrifice and love for us. Our family or your family may not be the wealthiest or the richest, but always remember your parents when you were growing up would have sought to give you the best. Yeah, the best that you need, that you don't have to look, you know, at another classmate's or another friend's house that is so much bigger, or their dad drives a car that is so much more powerful. But whatever, whatever you are given or provided, appreciate. Take time. I know Asian culture, a bit shy sometimes to tell (laughs) Dad, I love you, Mom, I love you. You Sometimes I say, but it's good. I'm sure your parents would appreciate it when you tell them you love them. Especially if you have a stay-at-home mom or maybe even a stay-at-home dad. Thank them for their years of sacrifice of their career, their work. Set aside time, full time, to bring you up when you were young. Show appreciation. Writing a card, bring them for a meal, give them a gift. Well, now COVID, we can't do that so much, but bring them for a holiday if you can. The third is to respect them kindly respect them kindly give due respect for their position as a parent and give due respect for the authority they have over you as your parent and respect comes to learn what it means to accept them for who they are to accept our parents for who they are to understand the difficult circumstances that they grew up under you know for me as i shared earlier my own situation about forgiving uh, my, my parents, so to speak. As I grew up, I learned a little bit more about what my father had gone through. My dad stopped school, stopped schooling at 12 years old. When he was 12, 13, yeah, he had to start working. Of course, in those days, no McDonald's eh, to, to work. I guess he learned other skills. The reason I found out the reason why, that my grandparents, my dad's parents, had 13 children to feed. One tree, eh? one tree. It's one football team no, with two reserves. Can you beat that? And my dad was number one. He was the eldest. So he had to sacrifice his education. 
to work to help my grandpa and grandma to look and provide. And he had a hard life. He had a hard life. And I understand and I understood because of this I could partly understand one of the reasons why I was put away to stay. So respect comes with accepting our parents. Respect means politeness and patience when we speak to them. Not rude, not easily angered, not easily irritated or frustrated. Years ago, I came across this video. It's just a short video, very short video of a, uh, of a grown man with his dad sitting by a bench in the park. And it's quite obvious that the elderly father perhaps had dementia and much forgiveness. And there was a bird that was flying around, a sparrow. And the elderly father asked, what is that? Then the son, reading his newspapers, son was about perhaps 20 plus, tell the father, it's a sparrow. Bird flew about and then came back round in front of them again at the bench in the park. And the father asked again the same question, what is that? And the son this time said, it's a sparrow. Made a blue flew out and came back again. And you know what's going to happen next, right? <laughs> the elderly father asked the same question, what is that? And this time the son just threw down his newspaper and said, it's a sparrow. At that point, the father got up from the bench, just walked off for a while. It happened to be the park just near their house. The father went into the house, came out, and we came back to sit next to the son with a notebook. He opened up the notebook. He showed to the son. Asked the son to read <laughs> what was written in the notebook. The son opened up read from the notebook and the son yeah the son read what was written it was a journal a diary the father had kept still with him <laughs> for many years and the son read on this particular date when this grown up son was a little boy he when he was a young kid the father had written today today my son Ask me 21 times, what is that? And the father answered patiently, lovingly, that is a sparrow. And after that, of course, you know, the son cried and hugged, and hugged the father. So sometimes, friends, when our parents grow old, don't lose patience. Don't lose patience with them. Be kind. Be kind with your words. Be respectful. Watch how you speak to your parents and your elders. Part of respect is also to seek the wisdom of our parents. Life has its twists and turns, its ups and downs, decisions to make. I think it is good to hear the experiences of our parents. We may not take every advice, especially when we are grown up. But it's good to ask. It's good to learn. It's good to heed and to understand so that we can make wise decisions. Let me go to my fourth point. Esteem them gladly. To esteem them privately in conversations. And to esteem them publicly in our speech, especially at weddings. It's always touching, isn't it? When the groom <laughs> and the bride, yeah, appreciate the parents, especially uh, special uh, family uh, dinners. In a powerful sermon on this command, Pastor Tim Keller encouraged children to 
I quote him, respect their parents' need to see themselves in you, unquote. Respect, their parent, respect your parents' need to see themselves in you. You see, my friends, parents long to see how they have impacted their children, how their children may be a reflection of their strengths and their values. So, for example, for example, parents will love when their children say, perhaps to the mom, you know, mom, everything I ever learned about saving up money, I learned from you. Wow, powerful. Or your daughter or son may come to you. Dad, you know, there was one thing you always taught me that I always appreciated. Simple measures, but all these bring joy and honour when we esteem our parents. So do our words, our, our words, my friends, our words have the power to extend honour or dishonour to our parents. You know, in the Old Testament, the penalty, in the Old Testament, the penalty for cursing parents is the same as the penalty for violently beating up the parent. For the root sin is the same. The root sin, whether cursed through words or beating up physically, the root sin is the same. Disrespect, impatience, bitterness. So esteem our parents, speak well of them. For those of us, parents are still alive, speak well of them. Even for parents like myself, my mom is alive, my dad has passed away, we can still speak well of them. They are not perfect. Speak well of them privately and publicly. Do not speak evil of them. Do not air our grievances in public. Speak well of them when they are alive. Speak well of them after they have died. Funerals, I attend so many as a pastor, and it's always a so-called, in a sad situation, a delight to hear how the son or the daughter appreciate, esteem their dad or their mom. Speak well of our parents to our siblings, to our spouses, to our children. Speak well of our parents, to, to our churches, to our communities, to model a counter-cultural kind of honour and respect. And, this, and in this particular area, I really always remember Bishop Rennis, uh, being our diocesan bishop, he has stepped down officially last Sunday. And always, often, when he speaks to us in private, or as a clergy band of uh, clergy on Tuesdays, or even in public in his sermon, you know, that he gives in the cathedral and elsewhere. The bishop, I learned from him, often share so openly, sincerely, joyfully, the rich spiritual legacy that his late parents have impacted him, have taught him, have instructed him how through the prayer life of his parents, how his parents had taught him the word of God, in particularly in the memorizing of the book of Psalms. You know, Bishop Rennes, if there's one book out of the 66, the book of Psalms is really, you know, he's a walking encyclopedia of the Psalms. And he attributes all this to how his parents have taught him. Someone I learned from about what it means to esteem, speak well, of our parents. Number five, nurture them lovingly. As our parents age, they need encouragement, support, help. They need our affection, our love, our care. And for this, as I observe, even for, for St. John's members, especially for those that, that are bringing your parents either to our English service or at special services we have, or you have brought your parents to the Mandarin, the Hokkien and the Cantonese service, I observed how you interact with them. I observed how you, you, uh, or, you know, if it's in their wheelchair, you bring them in by wheelchair, the, the way you care for them. I mean, so encouraged to nurture, so-called nurture, la, huh? nurture them uh, lovingly, especially if they are elderly or if they are unwell. My mom, 
is 87 this year. Dementia has set in in recent years. So whenever I visit her, I will realize there are not much she may remember of, uh, you know, yeah, of the past. So one thing I do whenever I visit, just sit next to her and I'll just sayang her on the back. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> no words. Too much to say. Also, she can't hear too much because if I say, I'll be like shouting. <laughs> but just sit next to her. Yeah, just pet her and just sayang her on the back too. Let her know she's well loved. King David, King David in Psalm 71, a very low point in his life, weighed down by the cares of the world, attacks from his enemies. Psalm 71 verse 9, King David cried out to God, Do not cast me off in the time of old age, forsake me not when my strength is spent. Here in this verse, we see a combination of his fear, old age and isolation. Oh, and alone that was his fear and i would think it's the fear of our elderly parents isn't it the story is told of a couple who decide to abandon their elderly father and bring them up to the top of the mountain and they design a carrier basket put the father in it and carried him up to the top of a mountain together with their young son. They brought father, grandfather up to the top of the mountain, thinking of just to abandon him there. So after saying goodbye to the father and telling the, their son to say goodbye to grandpa, they were about to leave. And then the son, and then the son looked at the father and said, hey dad, can we bring the carrier basket back with us? You know, they had planned to leave everything there. Grandpa, father with the basket. And the young son asked the dad, Dad, can we bring this carrier basket down the mountain? And the father wondered, why? Why, son? It's okay, we don't need it anymore. We have used it to carry grandpa up. Oh, then the boy just looked at the dad, innocently said, Well, dad, I think I need it because dad, when you are old, I will need this basket to bring you <laughs> up the mountain. Of course, when the son said that, it caused a change in the heart <laughs> of this couple. And they realized what they do, the son will learn. And he, one day, may do the same to them. They repented and brought the father back down again. Our parents need assurance that we will not forsake them in their old age as they become weak and feeble, losing their independence. As much as they have cared for us, we learn to care for them. That's our responsibility. That's our joy. Yes, we may be limited in some ways, finances, time, housing condition, but surely we can find a way. We can find a good way to care. Proverbs 23, 22. Listen to your father who gave you life and do not despise your mother when she's old. Number six, take care and provide for them financially. And here we look at Matthew 15. In Matthew 15, Jesus rebuked the Pharisees for their refusal to care for their parents. Matthew 15 verse 3, Jesus told them, Hey, why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? Remember the command, honour your father and your mother? And the Pharisees themselves, they are the ones who tell their own father and mother. The Pharisees tell their parents, what you would have received from me is now given to God as an offering. Jesus told them, rubbish! How can you do that? He rebuked them for their heartlessness. 
heartlessness towards their parents, right? They were supposed to give this portion to help and support their parents, but they tell their parents, uh, sorry, I would have given you this, but now it has been given to God. That's why in verse 7, Jesus called them hypocrites. Hypocrites. So on the one hand, he teach the commandments of God, but on the other hand, they do not practice what they teach. Their heart is far from God. The Apostle Paul told Timothy, the pastor, in 1 Timothy 5 verse 8, of course it is in the context of widows providing for their children. In 1 Timothy 5 8, it says, But if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. When children are young, God it requires the parents to take care of the young children. But when parents are old and elderly, the roles and responsibilities are reversed. So I ad address particularly the young working adults in our midst, especially if you just started working. Learn to set aside a certain part of your income to give an allowance to their parents. Even if you know they are still working and may not really need the money, Continue to give to them. It's an encouragement. Finally, P-A-R-E-N-T-S. And this one is Im important, especially for the younger ones. Submit to their authority obediently. Submit to their authority obediently. To, to the children in our church, remember this. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. This is right. Obey your parents in the Lord. Proverbs 6.20 My son, obey your father's commands and do not neglect your mother's teaching. So it's important for children to learn obedience. Because when the children learn obedience to their parents, they learn submission to the authority of God. Honouring parents in obedience is to learn to honour all authority around us, especially the authority of God over our lives. So when a child learns obedience to parents, they are in a good position to know what it means to come under the authority and the obedience to God. And also other forms of authority like school authorities, teachers and principals, governmental authorities, and so forth, then when one learns obedience, submission to authority, one learns what it means to come under the authority of God. Respect for parents, obedience to parents is the basis for every other kind of respect and every other kind of authority. Paul, when he wrote to encourage young Timothy, 2 Timothy 3 Verses 1 and 2, Paul told him, But understand this, understand this, that in the last days, in the last days there will be times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless. So I ask of us to pray. Pray for those in our families, pray for those in our church, those who know with children growing up, to pray for God's mercy and grace for the hearts of our children to be obedient to their parents. Remember our church children in, their, in your prayers as they grow up in such challenging circumstances of this world. Let me conclude. COVID-19 has impacted indeed families and marriages, affected parent-child relationships. Circuit breaker for those months was difficult for some families. The study stress our children go through and also our elderly parents in terms of their health, their loneliness, their anxieties, especially those weeks and months we cannot visit. The mental health, the emotional health of every family is important. And as we learn to honour our elders, our father and mother, it will help so much in emotional and mental health. 
we may not have perfect, we don't have perfect parents and family situation, but call, God calls us as His children to know what it means to pardon, what it means to, to be able to respect, what it means to be able to appreciate, to esteem, to nurture, to take care, provide, and submit to their authority. God calls us to honour our parents as the outflowing of our honouring God and to be a people to trust in His sovereignty by loving and respecting the parents He has placed in our lives. So today, I ask one question for us to reflect. In what ways is God calling you today to show honour to your parents today? I encourage you to do so before it's too late. A sudden stroke or heart attack may come. It may be too late. Or sudden death may come. My dad died relatively young at age 60, 23 years ago. He was imperfect, but he was a good father who tried to care for my brother uh, and I. Remember, I was told my dad and mom queued one whole day and one whole night just to get me a place in primary one at a neighborhood school. In those times, no computer. You have to queue up outside the school. And the queue was very long. It was one kilometer long. <laughs> and I remember good memories of my late father. He would come back from his work from the coffee shop at 2 a.m. and buy me a packet of oyster or jian. So whenever I eat Ochen today, I remember him. And the beautiful thing is now my children, my eldest girl especially, once in a while, she will buy me Ochen. <laughs> the roles have reversed in that sense. The last five years of my dad's life was difficult. He had illness, he had hospitalization, he was a diabetic, he had a few amputations. But I only thank God for the ways that I could find to honour him. Earlier I shared about forgiving, and after forgiving, I learned what it means to honour, bring him for his appointments, managed to bring him for a holiday in KL. Of course, when I did all that, little did I know that he would die at age 60 at the hospital. He came too soon. Hoping he can see my children grow up. Of course, that time we only had the first one. Grace was only one year old. I thank God, that just before he died, those few years, there were opportunity to honor him. So for you, my dear friends, Do so to your dad and your mom or your grandparents before it's too late. Choose to do it. Don't depend on how you feel. Choose to honor your father and your mother, especially if they have not come to faith in Christ. The more so, the more so your action your response, your attitude, by the grace of God, who open the door in their heart to God, to our Lord Jesus Christ. For the end of the day, the most important thing is that their name is written in the book of life. Amen. Let's pause for a while. And allows God's spirit to speak to our hearts. So God is telling you today, in what ways is God calling you to show honor to your parents? And so God speak to your heart. To obey his voice. We just give a little bit of time, perhaps I just ask Eileen. To just play a tune for just these short moments before I hand the time to Hide. And in these moments, as the Spirit of God reach your heart, 
especially for anyone finding it so difficult to forgive your parents. We need the grace of God. Or for that matter, our in-laws. <laughs> Some may have a problem with that today, but only by the grace of God. So as Eileen plays this song for a little while, no rush, so allow God to speak to your heart. Father, we thank you for speaking to our hearts today. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit ministering to us. Lord, we need your grace and your mercy. Lord, we know that the devil has come to destroy all that is good in your creation. Of most importance is the family. We ask God that we be alert to the deceitful strategies of the evil one to break up families, especially parents and children. So Lord, I especially pray for this, my dear brothers and sisters in our church community, that especially for any one of us needing what it means to forgive our parents, Lord, we may find grace in you to do so. And for all the other areas that we have spoken about today, Lord, you help us, Lord, we need your help. What means to honor our father and our mother? Even for us, if we are in any area, we have grieved the heart of our parents, that we too learn to ask them for their forgiveness. So bring about peace, rest, harmony in the home today. Lord, in every home, Father, I pray, Lord, for your peace, in your joy, in your love to prevail to the glory of God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us uh, Apostles Creed uh, together. Uh, let us stand. I'm sorry. together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, please be seated uh, as we come into a time of intercession. Intercession can be found on the inside of your bulletin. Uh, today we'll be praying for the Diocesan Education Month. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks, Lord, for the schools and the preschools that are within the diocese. Lord, I give you thanks for the people who are working in every preschool and school. Father, I pray, Lord, that they will not see their vocation as a job, but as a calling from you, O oh Lord. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you uh, uh, fill them afresh uh, with your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, so that they may work to your praise and glory. Father, we thank you, Lord, for um, uh, Mrs. Chan Siu Chen, who has stepped down as the Diocesan Secretary of School after 15 years of faithful service. Lord, we give you thanks, Lord, for her, for you calling her and she uh, faithfully uh, responding and serving, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord, even as she moves into a new season in her life, Father, Lord, we pray, uh, Lord, that you lead and guide her, O oh, Father. Lord, we thank you, Father. We pray, Lord, for her successor, Dr. Lim Lai Cheng. Lord, uh, your wisdom, strength, mercy, a double portion of uh, wisdom, O oh Lord, truly to be upon her in this, uh, this season, even as she uh, fulfills the role, Lord, that you have called her, O oh Lord. Father, I pray, um, even in this time of pandemic, uh, there will be a deeper reflection among the students and staff on life's big questions, O oh Lord. Lord, I pray, Father, that you will draw, Lord, the lost sheep, your lost sheep, Father, back to you, Father. Uh, and Lord, I pray, Father, that um, even as they seek to answer the questions of life, the Lord, that you will speak to them in the way that they understand. Father, I pray also for um, uh, the Anglican uh, preschools uh, that they are being consolidated into the under the diocese banner of the Anglican preschool services. Father, even as they um, uh, come together to um, be united, Father, I pray for all righteousness to be done. Pray for the principals of those preschools that Lord that you give them strength and wisdom uh, to uh, go through this process. And uh, Father, may your name be praised, O oh Father, and your name be glorified uh, in this uh, process, O oh Father. Lord, at this time, we want to pray, Father, for uh, the people in St. John's Chapel who teach the Word, O oh Father. Teach your Word. Father, at this time, I want to pray, Father, for the children, ministry teachers, youth leaders, young adult leaders, cell leaders, Bible teachers, boys brigade and girls brigade officers and helpers, the chaplaincy staff and volunteers. Father, I pray, Father, even as they impart your word and they sow the seeds, Father, I pray, Lord, that they will be encouraged and they will not grow weary uh, in doing good, O oh, Father. Lord, we pray and ask, Lord, that you uh, lead and guide uh, all these people who teach your word, Lord, that they will um, be fruitful for you, O oh, Lord, and for your kingdom. Thank you, Lord. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, at this time, uh, shall we uh, rise as we sing the next song, or rather hum the next song in our hearts, shall we return to the Lord, um, His tithe and our offerings.
understanding the Greco-Roman world of the New Testament. Uh, three th uh, Wednesdays in September. Uh, do sign up. Uh, the Google link is there. Um, do take note, yes. Second announcement, Children's Day 2020. Uh, it's called The Great Big Love. Uh, children uh, aged 4 to 12 are welcome. It's on the 10th of October. Uh, do sign up. The Google link is on the bulletin. And uh, the committee is looking for volunteers. Uh, please reach out to uh, Chloe Ong or Pastor Sherlyn Yap uh, for more information. Uh, it is done online. BB Week, um, we have three companies. Uh, six, uh, 64th company, Amokyo Secondary. 52nd Junior Company at Peitong Primary School. Uh, 59th Junior Company at Greenridge Primary. Uh, this uh, BB Week is a fundraising uh, so that uh, the boys can uh, um, uh, go for training and equipping the boys and officers and organizing competitions uh, for the boys. Uh, do take note, tomorrow is the last day. So, um, yes, and uh, when you, when you uh, donate, please include, uh, remember to include uh, the code 52nd J, uh, 59th uh, J, and the 64th company. Yeah. Um, that's all. Uh, please, uh, please rise for the closing song.
be seated. The service is over.